I'd like to try to give you some characteristics to distinguish between Quercus texana, the nutall oak, and Quercus schumardii. Uh, both of these are red oaks and have bristle tip lobes. Uh, they are similar in that both of them have, again, the bristle tip lobes. They often have a uh, similar number of lobes. Uh, they overlap with how many different lobes they have and um, there's just a lot about these things that uh, both species that are similar. Let's start by looking at Quercus texana, the nut all oak. I'm just going to reach up here and pluck a leaf and we'll take a peek at it. And one of the things that helps me uh, for a lot of the uh, Quercus texana uh, specimens is that the sinuses tend to be a little bit wider at the mouth of the sinus on Quercus texana than on Quercus schumardii. This is an example here. In general, at the end of the lobes on Quercus texana, there are going to be fewer bristle tips than on Quercus schumardii. Here is a specimen of Quercus schumardia. Let me come grab a leaf off of it and make some comparisons. So when you look at a schumard oak leaf, um, you'll find often that many of the sinuses are narrower at the mouth of the sinus than they are in Quercus texana. And also another pattern that comes up uh, often is that there are going to be far more bristle tips on the end of the lobes on Schumard oak rather than nut all oak. Um, and I'm not sure if this is true for all specimens, but in general, at least to my eye, uh, when the leaves are mature and fully expanded, uh, the leaves on Schumardii tend to be a little glossier than the leaves on Texana, but that's fairly subjective. Another characteristic that can be used to distinguish between Quercus texana leaves and Quercus shimardii leaves is that when the leaves are fully expanded and mature, the Quercus texana leaves will be more or less glabrous underneath, maybe with a little bit of hair in the axils of the veins. And mature Quercus shimardii leaves will have a little bit of velvety pubescence. Uh, unfortunately, these leaves are still expanding uh, this is March 27th, and those features aren't useful just yet. I don't often include acorn characteristics, simply because between the squirrels and the deer, the wild hogs in South Mississippi, it's often rare to find an acorn when you need one. However, if you can find acorns for these two species, for Quercus texana, and Quercus shimardii, they are distinctly different. For Quercus shimardii, the acorn caps are sort of flat and broad, almost like a, a, a dinner plate with a, a, a big lip on it. Whereas the acorn caps for Quercus texana are sort of bowl shaped or, or goblet shaped. A little bit narrower and that helps a bit if you can find those. I've brought in some leaves of Quercus schumardii and Quercus texana for comparison. This, uh, these leaves right here belong to Quercus schumardii. As you can see, um, lots of bristle points on the uh, end of the lobes and you can also see uh, the lobes are many times narrower at the tip than the base. This isn't always true, like this one's not, uh, but it happens uh, quite often. Uh, over here for Quercus texana, um, this particular one has fewer lobes, but that's not always the case. But when you look closely, you'll see there's typically fewer bristle tips on each lobe. And then more often the lobes are more broader at the opening than at the base. Another feature that we sometimes see uh, when we look at uh, Quercus shumardii versus Texana leaves 
is uh, a difference in the shape of the leaf base. So here on the Corcus shimardii, the leaf bases are truncate or almost straight across. Uh, that's not always the case, but it's quite common. And over here on Texana, we see that the leaf, leaf bases are acute uh, and are more pointed, and that's more common than not. Uh, we mentioned the acorn caps. Uh, can't always find those, but if you look, this acorn cap on Shimardii is quite flat. Where is the acorn cap over here for Texana is more goblet shaped and has a little more depth to it. Both Quercus shumardii and Quercus texana uh, can overlap in habitats. You can find them both in bottomlands and floodplains, and sometimes mesic forests too. Both of them are suitable as landscape trees and are very popular in urban plantings.